Is your compost pile taking forever to break down, leaving you frustrated and your garden starving for nutrients? What if I told you there's a secret ingredient sitting in your kitchen right now that can turn your raw organic matter into nutrient-dense humus gold in a fraction of the time? We're about to unveil a groundbreaking discovery that will completely transform how you think about composting. Forget expensive fancy activators and mysterious commercial products. The key to hyper-accelerated humus production isn't some exotic additive, but a common household staple you probably already own. We're not just theorizing here, we're scientifically demonstrating how a simple baking soda application unlocks incredible microbial activity, transforming your compost into the richest, most life-giving soil amendment your plants have ever experienced. The Humus Gold Promise Why We Need a Bioaccelerator Every serious gardener understands that finished compost, true humus, is the foundation of thriving, productive gardens. This dark, crumbly, sweet-smelling material is teeming with beneficial microorganisms, stable organic matter, and plant-available nutrients in forms that synthetic fertilizers simply cannot replicate. Humus improves soil structure, increases water retention, feeds soil biology, and provides slow-release nutrition that sustains plants throughout the growing season. It's literally garden gold, the end product of nature's most sophisticated recycling system. However, the frustrating reality that most composters face is that achieving genuine humus through traditional methods can take anywhere from six months to two years, depending on materials, management, and climate conditions. This slow burn problem of traditional composting creates real challenges for home gardeners who need finished compost now, not next season. You've probably experienced this yourself, piling up kitchen scraps and yard waste with great intentions, only to find that months later, you're still looking at recognizable banana peels, partially decomposed leaves, and woody materials that haven't broken down at all. Meanwhile, your garden beds are crying out for organic matter, your transplants need nutrient-rich potting mix, and you're tempted to just buy bagged compost of questionable quality from the garden center. The gap between your composting timeline and your gardening needs becomes a constant source of frustration, leading many gardeners to abandon composting altogether or settle for mediocre results. The central question that drove my experimentation was simple but profound. Can a readily available, inexpensive household item dramatically accelerate the composting process without compromising the quality of the finished product. After researching microbial ecology and the chemistry of decomposition, I hypothesize that adjusting the pH environment in compost could create optimal conditions for the beneficial bacteria and fungi that drive the transformation from raw organic matter to stable humus. What I discovered through careful experimentation and observation exceeded my expectations, revealing a method so effective and accessible that it has the potential to revolutionize home composting for gardeners everywhere. Alright, so here's the real secret. What we're talking about is sodium bicarbonate, or just plain old baking soda. This is a remarkable bioaccelerator that costs just pennies for each use and, honestly, you probably have some sitting in your kitchen right now. Now, before you think this sounds way too simple to actually work, you should know the science behind baking soda's compost accelerating power is both elegant and, well, surprisingly powerful. Sodium bicarbonate is what's called a mild alkaline compound, and when you add it to your compost, if you use the right amount, it creates a pH environment that specifically helps the thermophilic bacteria. These are the guys responsible for that hot, fast phase of composting. Most raw, organic stuff, especially kitchen scraps loaded with fruits and veggies, actually starts off pretty acidic as it breaks down. And, you know, that acidic environment can slow things down by making it tough for the good microorganisms, those that like things neutral or just a little alkaline, to do their job. Once you toss a bit of baking soda into your compost pile, a bunch of helpful chemical and biological processes kick off right away. First, the sodium bicarbonate gets to work neutralizing those organic acids that show up early in decomposition, bumping the pH up from a sour 5.5 or 6 into a sweet spot of 7 to 8, which is perfect for those thermophilic bacteria. These heat-loving bacteria really are the workhorses of rapid composting. 
They can break down organic matter at crazy fast rates when the conditions are just right. As they multiply and chow down on organic materials, they generate heat, that warm feeling you get from an active compost pile, which actually speeds up chemical reactions and helps everything decompose even faster. Plus, when baking soda reacts with those organic acids, it releases a bit of carbon dioxide, and that CO2 can give a boost to certain beneficial fungi. Those fungi are super important for breaking down the tough stuff in plants, like cellulose and lignin. The microbial boost created by optimal pH conditions leads directly to faster decomposition and more efficient nutrient unlocking from organic materials. When thermophilic bacteria thrive, they produce enzymes that break down proteins into amino acids and eventually into plant-available nitrogen, decompose complex carbohydrates into simpler sugars that feed other beneficial organisms, and release minerals bound up in plant and animal tissues. The pile heats up to temperatures between 130 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to kill weed seeds and pathogens while maintaining conditions that beneficial microbes love. This hot phase, which might last only a few days or weeks in untreated compost, can be extended and intensified with proper baking soda application dramatically reducing the overall time to finished humus while producing a more thoroughly decomposed biologically active end product. The experiment. Setting up for accelerated success. To rigorously test the effectiveness of baking soda as a compost accelerator, I set up a carefully controlled side-by-side -side comparison using identical materials, conditions, and management practices with one critical difference, the addition of baking soda to the treatment pile. Both piles started with the same mix of materials, roughly 60% brown materials, including shredded autumn leaves cardboard pieces and dried grass clippings, combined with 40% green materials, including kitchen scraps, fresh grass clippings, and coffee grounds. Each pile measured approximately 3 feet cubed, which is the minimum size needed to generate and maintain the heat required for hot composting. I built both piles on the same day, in the same location with identical sun exposure and drainage, turning them on the same schedule to ensure any differences observed would be attributable solely to the baking soda treatment. The precise dosage and application method for baking soda proved critical to achieving optimal results without overshooting into overly alkaline conditions that could inhibit decomposition. After testing various concentrations, I found that one cup of baking soda per cubic yard of compost materials, applied as the pile is built, provides the sweet spot for pH optimization. In practical terms, for my three-foot cubed piles containing roughly one cubic yard of material, I dissolved one cup of baking soda in two gallons of water and sprinkled this solution evenly throughout the pile as I built it in layers. This application method ensures even distribution and immediate availability to microorganisms throughout the pile rather than creating alkaline pockets. For the control pile, I added plain water at the same rate to match moisture levels, eliminating hydration as a variable in the comparison. Tracking parameters were essential for documenting the transformation and validating the effectiveness of the baking soda treatment. I monitored internal pile temperature daily using a compost thermometer, recording readings from multiple locations within each pile to ensure accuracy. Moisture levels were assessed weekly by the squeeze test, grabbing a handful of material from the center of each pile and checking that it held together like a wrung-out sponge, neither dripping water nor feeling dry. Smell was evaluated during each turning, noting the progression from fresh organic odor through ammonia-like smells during active decomposition to the earthy, sweet smell of finished compost. Visual changes were photographed weekly, documenting the breakdown of recognizable materials, changes in particle size and texture, color transformation from varied browns and greens to uniform dark brown or black, and the overall volume reduction as decomposition progressed. The differences between the baking soda treated pile and the control became apparent within the first week and grew more dramatic as time progressed. By day three, the treated pile had reached an internal temperature of 145 degrees Fahrenheit, while the control pile peaked at only 110 degrees, a significant difference that translated directly to decomposition speed. The higher temperature in the treated pile was sustained for nearly three weeks, while the control pile's heat spike lasted only about 10 days before dropping back to ambient temperature. 
When I turned both piles for the first time on day 7, the contrasts were visually striking. The treated pile showed substantial breakdown of soft materials like kitchen scraps and green matter, with everything beginning to blend into a more uniform texture. The control pile still contained clearly identifiable food scraps, intact leaf pieces, and distinct layers of different materials. Microbial activity monitoring revealed the biological engine driving these dramatic differences. During each turning, I collected samples from both piles for what I call the vitality assessment, a combination of direct observation and simple tests that indicate microbial health and activity. The treated pile consistently showed more visible fungal growth, particularly the white thread-like mycelium that breaks down tough plant materials. The smell test during active decomposition revealed another key difference. The treated pile had a stronger but cleaner ammonia-like odor, indicating rapid protein breakdown and nitrogen release, while the control pile smelled sour and slightly putrid, suggesting slower, less efficient anaerobic decomposition in some pockets, despite regular turning. When I examined small samples under a basic microscope, the treated pile samples teemed with visible bacterial movement and showed more diverse fungal structures compared to the relatively quiet control samples. The structural breakdown and color change in the treated pile accelerated dramatically through weeks three to six. By the end of week four, it was nearly impossible to identify individual materials in the treated pile. Everything had broken down into small uniform particles with a crumbly texture. The color had transformed from the varied browns, greens, and yellows of the starting materials into a rich, dark chocolate brown throughout. Volume had reduced by approximately 60% as materials decomposed and settled. In stark contrast, the control pile at week 6 still contained recognizable leaf pieces, partially decomposed food scraps, and a mottled color pattern ranging from light tan to dark brown. Its volume had decreased only about 35% and the texture remained chunky and uneven with pockets of different material types clearly visible. The moment of truth arrived at week 8, when I screened both piles through half-inch mesh to assess the finished product. The baking soda treated pile yielded approximately 70% finished compost that passed through the screen as dark, crumbly, sweet-smelling humus. True compost gold that met every criterion for finished product. This material had completely transformed from recognizable organic waste into stable humus, with a texture like rich coffee grounds, a deep black-brown color, and that characteristic earthy smell that signals complete decomposition. The control pile at the same time point yielded only about 25% finished material, with the remaining 75% requiring additional weeks of composting to fully break down. The quality difference was equally significant. The treated pile's finished compost had a more uniform texture, richer color, and more pronounced biological activity when examined closely. The tangible benefits of using this fast-tracked, high-quality humus in your garden extend across every aspect of soil health and plant performance. When I incorporated the baking soda accelerated compost into garden beds at a rate of 2 inches, worked into the top 6 inches of soil, the improvements were measurable within a single growing season. Soil structure transformed from dense compacted clay into loose, friable material that drained well yet retained moisture efficiently. The holy grail of soil texture. Laboratory analysis showed that organic matter content increased from less than 2% to over 4% in treated beds, while nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium levels all rose significantly despite no additional fertilizer applications. Micronutrient availability also improved, with plant tissue tests showing higher levels of iron, zinc, and manganese in crops grown in compost-amended beds compared to controls. Plant vigor and productivity in beds amended with the accelerated compost exceeded my expectations and validated the entire experiment. Tomatoes produced 30% more fruit by weight with plants showing deeper green foliage, thicker stems, and better disease resistance throughout the season. Leafy greens grew faster and larger with harvest-ready salad greens appearing nearly two weeks earlier than in previous years. Root vegetables developed more extensive, well-formed roots with fewer deformities and better storage quality. Beyond these production metrics, the overall health and resilience of the garden ecosystem improved noticeably. Beneficial insects were more abundant, fungal diseases were virtually absent despite humid conditions, and plants recovered quickly from environmental stresses like heat waves and heavy rains that would have set them back significantly in previous seasons. The transformation I've documented here isn't a one-time success story or a lucky accident. 
It's a replicable, scientifically grounded method that any gardener can implement with materials costing less than $5. By understanding the chemistry of decomposition and the environmental preferences of beneficial microorganisms, we've unlocked a simple but powerful technique that cuts composting time in half while actually improving the quality of the finished product. This is exactly the kind of breakthrough that separates regenerative gardening from conventional approaches. We're not forcing nature to work on our timeline through chemical intervention, but rather optimizing conditions so that natural processes can proceed at their maximum efficiency. If you're excited to try this baking soda bioaccelerator method in your own compost and want to dive deeper into the science and techniques of building living soil, subscribe to the Living Soil Lab for weekly videos on advanced composting methods, soil biology, and regenerative gardening practices that actually work. Document your own experiments with this method, share your results in the comments, and let's build a community of gardeners who understand that the fastest path to garden success runs directly through the compost pile. Together, we're not just making compost, we're manufacturing humus gold that will feed our gardens and regenerate our soils for seasons to come.